Hello everyone, I'm Mike Dettinger. Welcome to my video clinic. When I was a youngster, starting out as a model railroader, I often wondered what it would be like to sit in a passenger car or a locomotive as it traveled along my model railroad. I am very certain that many viewers can relate to this idea. Today we will discuss the use of a camera car to create first person videos from track level. Until shrink ray technology is perfected for human beings, a first person video is probably the closest we can come to physically experience a train ride on our own layout. Although I would argue that certain older subway trains provide a close approximation of the physical rigors of riding inside a toy train. In its purest form, a camera car is simply a camera mounted to a flat car. More advanced camera cars will have the ability to stream the video to a trackside device. And the most advanced camera cars will do all this while looking like a normal piece of rolling stock. Did you happen to spot the camera car in the video? It is the same camera car that shot our opening first person video clip. As digital cameras get smaller, it becomes easier for the adventurers to build their own camera cars, even in smaller scales. Certainly an Arduino could be used to interface the camera and add some additional functionality to a project. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, I've put a link in the description for a very sophisticated camera car project. However, at this point, my program will fork and focus on historical or commercially available My research for this clinic led me to the discovery of an interesting picture of a giant camera mounted to a flat car in 1900. Videography was a decade away, so it was definitely a still camera. The flat car load was a purpose-built camera designed to shoot an entire train on a single glass plate for display at a World's Fair. The entire story and proof of a real world railroad camera car can be found in the link I placed in the description. The earliest evidence of model railroad videography I located was found in the June July issue of Miniature Railroading Magazine. Miniature Railroading was a tablet sized model railroading periodical that was started in 1938. Miniature railroading was focused on layout animation and using the available technologies to increase the enjoyment of model railroading. It also featured some of the earliest coverage of scale figures and triggered layout sound systems. Miniature railroading became a casualty of the Second World War. It was merged into model craftsmen, which later became railroad model craftsmen at the end of 1941. Fortunately, some of the work pioneered in Miniature Railroad continued along into the pages of RMC. Not for the faint of heart, model railroad videography was rather involved in 1941. To prepare the camera car required focusing the lens, loading the camera with film, and winding the lever and securing the camera itself to a flat car. It also involved adding light sources across the route along the layout. Running the camera car also had a checklist. It required a double check that the lens cap was removed. Once verified, the camera was started and the train could move. The length of the film was determined by the energy of the spring. The camera could be rewound but care would be required not to change the settings or the film would jump. With the filming runs completed, the camera car needed to be recovered and the film extracted. If a dark room was not available, the film would need to be sent out for developing. Editing the film required the physical cutting and splicing of celluloid. Sharing the video was not a simple task either. A screen and projector needed to be set up. Friends needed to be invited over and popcorn needed to be popped. Once the audience was ready, the curtains were drawn, the lights went down, 
and the magic happened. I felt the need to expand the steps to highlight all the labor to produce and view a first-person railroad video. It is a testament to the strong desire to capture the reality of riding model rails back in 1941. We are fortunate that filming and viewing videos from the tracks is less complicated today. The next major video milestone occurred four decades later in the 1980s. Lionel introduced RailScope which leveraged home video game technologies and closed circuit TV technologies. A camera mounted in the locomotive would transmit a signal to a trackside receiver, which was connected to a standard NTSC TV, an old school TV with a tube. The video feed was sensitive to light levels and prone to some interference. However, from a TV set located near the train layout, there was a real time glimpse of riding the rail. The technology of the time was rather bulky, and many modelers did not want to commit the space required for a TV set in their layout area. As a result, Lionel Railscope was not the commercial success that Lionel had hoped for, and it did not last very long. Just two decades later, in 2007, the first iPhone was introduced. This device was to change the way we think of our phones. Since the dimensions of the iPhones did not interfere with the HO scale clearances, there was a number of laser cut wooden iPhone carrying rail car kits. These easy to assemble kits were designed for a specific iPhone model, which would ultimately lead to the demise of these kits altogether. Since Apple likes to change the dimensions of its iPhone with each major release, it became uneconomical to design and sell each of these carriers after several iterations. Today, most new smartphones are just physically too large to traverse even HO scale rails. Of particular note, the iPhone camera was redirected with a mirror on the iPhone carrier car itself, reversing all the videos from left to right. This required some post-processing for correction. In 2017, Tomix introduced the 5594 camera car set, followed by the 5595 camera car set the following year. Sets containing all the pieces required to be game changers in the model railroad videography world. The N scale camera car sets consist of three units a camera car, a motor car, and a trailing car. All three cars follow the lines of a prototype Japanese commuter train and the camera is almost invisible to anyone viewing the set on the layout. The camera shoots out the front window of the lead unit. The camera car contains a Wi-Fi access point and a server that can stream a video feed to an app on a Wi-Fi connected smartphone. The app can record the video stream to be shared at a later time. Although not supported, it should be possible to stream a live feed on the internet with some configuration changes. The exciting part is that this set represents the first step towards a remote first person control of a train from any internet connected device, opening up a world of possibilities for operations or just running trains in general. In my excitement, however, I forgot to mention a large problem facing the English speaking viewers and model railroaders. The entire package and apps are written in Japanese. As a non-speaker, I focus my research now on Japanese translation strategies. Unlike Spanish, French, or other Latin-based language, I cannot simply type out the letters I see into a translation program. To further complicate my plight, there are four written character sets in Japanese, and all four character sets could be in use even at the same time. Most people are aware of kanji, consisting of elaborate pictograms where each character represents a word. Over 50,000 kanji exist. Fortunately, only a couple thousand kanji are in common use. Kana is the name given to a pair of phonetic alphabets. Each character represents a sound. Hiragana 
is the kana used for common Japanese words. Katakana is the kana used for foreign words. Both hiragana and katakana share the same 46 syllables, but they are represented by entirely different characters. The final character set is called Romanji, and it is essentially the Latin alphabet. This character set is used primarily for corporate and brand names. While learning Japanese can be a worthwhile endeavor, the availability of internet utilities to translate Japanese will greatly aid our quest. As stated earlier, there really is no easy way to type Japanese character by character into a translation site. And in many cases, cut and paste is unavailable. The solution can be found in Optical Character Recognition, or OCR. Simply take a picture of the Japanese characters for translation and feed it into your computer. The site I use is called Yandex, and, it is, and the link is posted in the description below. The translations are not always as clear as an English speaker would hope, but they are machine translations and are word for word translations. So the grammar considerations, the idiomatic expressions and other language rules are not always included. However, regardless of the peculiarities, I was able to glean the meaning of the text in most cases. Armed with Japanese translation tools, it becomes possible to take a deeper look at the camera and the motor cars using the original Japanese documentation. As expected, the camera car requires a constant minimum voltage of 6 volts or so in order to remain active. For DCC, this is not a problem. The camera car is freewheeling and is fitted with a Rapido coupler. It could be placed in front of any DCC powered locomotive to be pushed around the layout quite easily. The set itself is not DCC ready and was designed for exclusive use on DC systems. The motor car has extra circuitry that prevents the car from moving until a certain voltage threshold has been met. If there is a strong desire to add DCC to the motor car, then the existing circuitry could be removed and replaced with a decoder. As we take a look at the inside of the camera car, I would ask if you found this video informative to like and subscribe. I have a number of interesting projects in the work and I would love to share them with you. While not officially available in the US, these camera car sets can be found on eBay or one of the online Japanese hobby shops. I will place some links in the description below. Let's conclude this little clinic with a video streamed from the 5595 train to my iPhone. Have a great day.